Hello, and welcome back to our discussion on intents. Uh, we have seen what an intent is, what an intent filter is, uh, what is an explicit intent, what is an implicit intent. We have seen examples of starting another activity using explicit intent and passing data from the origin activity to the target activity and from target activity back to the origin activity. So in this last video on this topic, uh, we'll talk about uh, tasks and backstack, okay? Um, to motivate that discussion, let's take another look at our, um, our app, oh, okay. Well, that was a unexpected snafu, all right. So here we are, right? Um, I have Dice Games installed and um, what happens when I click the Dice Games button, right? It starts here on my wallet activity, right? Now, let's say I play around a little bit, gain some coins um, and go to the Shonan activity, right? Let's say at this point, I click my home button. Now, if I were to click the Dice Games icon on the home or the launcher screen, what happens? This time, it brings uh, the Shohan activity in its last saved UI state. So what is happening here? First of all, um, on the first invocation, why did it bring up the wallet activity and not the Shohan activity. I think you guys know the reason. Um, it is because of this intent filter in our manifest. So the wallet activity is has action main and category launcher. That's why that is the one that will be launched. But then the question is, what happened the second time? Why did we get, uh, why did the same action that is pressing the icon on the launcher uh, did not bring up the wallet activity, but instead it showed us the um, the Shohan activity in whatever state it was. Right? So why does that happen? Um, to understand that, uh, we need to understand the tasks and backstack in Android. Okay, so a task in Android um, is a collection of activities that the user interacts with. I think I have it on the slides here, yeah. A task is a collection of activities that the user interacts with when performing a certain job. Now that's rather vague, but that is that is deliberately so. You know, the idea is um, the, the job or the task here is a coherent action that a user wants to perform. Example of this could be, um, let's say you have a messenger app you go to the home screen, launch the messenger app. Um, and let's say it opens up with, um, uh, with an activity that shows you a list of several uh, messages that you have received right, um, by senders. That's a very typical um, thing in a messenger app. Now you click on your uh, friend's message that uh, you received uh, recently. So it now shows the second activity of the same app, which is show detailed message activity, let's say. In that detailed message activity, um, um, let's say the, uh, let's say your friend has sent you a URL, okay? So you click on that URL and then you go to the browser, which is now another app and another activity in that app. Now let's imagine on that browser, you find an email address. What happens when you click on that email address? Um, uh, it will most likely it will pull up your email app and open it in the compose activity of the email app, right? So we, in this, in this example, we just talked about four activities spread over three apps, but all these um, actions, all these jumping from activity one to activity two is a, uh, is a coherent, logical, single job for, from the user's point of view. And it only makes sense if there is a way of representing that in the system as well. Okay. So um, this collection of activities is what we are talking about here. That is a 
that is a specific job um, and it is arranged as a stack. Now, you know, uh, synonymous for job is task. So that is what Android uses when talking about uh, this particular concept. So you have a task, which is a collection of uh, such activities and they are arranged in a stack such that the most recent one is on the top. So in the example that we just discussed, um, the list all messages activity of the, um, of the messenger app is right now at the bottom of this particular stack. On top of that, you have a detailed message view. On top of that, you have the browser uh, activity. Um, and on top of that, you have the compose email activity, right? Um, in a multi-windowed environment supported by API 24 and above, um, when you can have you know, more than one windows on the same screen, um, it basically supports one stack per window instead of having just one stack for the entire screen, which is the default when you don't have multi-window environment or you're not launching an app in that uh, environment. Okay. So as we saw with the example, it can consist of different activities um, from different apps. It need not be in the same app, in, in fact. So here is another quick example. So you click on activity one icon on home. This is the stack activity one is the foreground activity. You will launch activity two through activity one. It can be in any app and this is where you come. Then you launch activity three through activity two and this is what happens. Activity three is the foreground activity. Now you press the back button, right? So back button is the one that pops the top of the stack off and makes the new top um, the foreground activity. Okay, so there activity three will be popped off and you'll be in activity two. So for example, in that compose uh, activity, you are done composing and then you click the back button, um, you will come back to the browser activity. And in a similar way, you'll proceed down the stack. Okay, so, um, um let's talk a lot let's talk a little more about this so there can be multiple tasks that is multiple ta uh, stacks um, at a given time in the android os and when you click the home button um, you move the entire stack to the background okay um, and all activities in a in a stack that is in the background will be in the stopped state this is how Android essentially supports multitasking. So um, this is a diagram from Android official documentation. And what we see here is um, you were in task A at one point uh, on activity Y being uh, at foreground. Um, then you click the home button. So this entire task, task A with its activity X and Y went to background then let's say from uh, the launcher, you clicked um, a button which opened another instance of activity Y um, in the foreground. So let's say activity Y is um, the main uh, activity for some app. So that's where you are. And then from activity Y, you, um, you launched activity Z, okay? So since this launch of activity Y was after pressing the home button, um it creates another stack so that is uh, a more common behavior uh, of course there there can be uh, other ways of uh, uh, handling it such that there's only one instance of activity y but that's not what we are talking about right now all right okay so in this example activity z is the foreground activity um, and uh, when the user presses the recents or the overview button, which is the square uh, on the bottom of the screen in most uh, devices nowadays, um, you look uh, not at an activity uh, actually, but you are looking at uh, uh, the list of stacks and uh, um, you can go through them, you can kill a, an entire stack or you can jump to um, an arbitrary stack from that particular interface. So uh, the default behavior of activities on the stack is they are never rearranged. 
And what that means is um, there is there is uh, there is going to be uh, you know only um, uh, there is only going to be uh, by default there is going to be only one instance of the activity on the stack uh, on a given stack and that can go uh, that can pop up and uh, pop off push push and that can get pushed and popped off uh, based on the user action um, but um, as it's shown in this diagram over here. Uh, it is possible to give a special behavior uh, to a, a to an individual activity. Um, so you know there can be multiple instances of the activity on the stack uh, in that case, especially if the app allows launching an activity in more than one ways, then that is possible, right? So in this case, the home activity was started by clicking the launcher button then you go to activity two from the home activity and let's say from activity two uh, you are able to launch the home activity again now in that case instead of um, you know pulling the home activity at the top by default um, the system creates another instance so you get a stack like this and when you click the back button it revisits all of these instances in its its own state they are so these are like you know java instances so you know they they can uh, they can capture their own state and save that state and use that state of course this behavior can be modified we won't go into the details of how it can be modified um, just a little bit here at the end but yeah so non standard behavior may be desirable sometimes for example there is a special activity um, which should be uh, which should always start a new task because um, uh, you know it, it uh, that activity launches or typically launches um, several other actions from there so whenever you get to that activity it's a new task and a new stack by itself uh, that is one example um, another example is where pulling up an old instance um, makes sense instead of creating a new one um, okay so um, for for showing the data or the ui state that the activity was in previously um, and uh, you could uh, you may also want to clear the entire stack when the user leaves an activity so you know, that's where you can give it uh, another special behavior um, and this can be done in one of the two ways one you can specify some particular attributes um, in the manifest file under the activity tag. So along with the intent filters, you can also specify certain other things that affect um, intents and how these activities are launched. Or of course, in your Java code, you can specify certain flags uh, when uh, you are launching that activity using start activity. So there are certain uh, system defined flags that go with the intents um, uh, so we'll leave um, details of this particular aspect um, to doing one of the homeworks a little later okay so that's that's the background about tasks um, and you saw in that discussion uh, what happens when you click the back button and uh, um, last time when we talked about the show and activity uh, you know there was this question about what happens if the user clicks the back button um, the answer was well we have not uh, yet configured what should happen when you click the back button so that's what we'll go and do now it's not going to be terribly different from how we handled the return to wallet button but let's quickly go ahead and do that and give our app a more uh, more reasonable more you know as expected behavior okay so yeah um okay so remember from our wallet activity we are still launching it as start activity for result like this and then capturing it in on activity result right so when we come to the show on activity um you remember we have the return to wallet button right um now to deal with the back button there is a um there is a lifecycle method on back pressed, which will override over here. Okay. 
first thing I'll do is log a message like we are here. And next thing is, that's not surprisingly, doing the exact same thing that we did in return to wallet. I'll make just one change. Um, pressing the back button is supposed to send the canceled um, result code. So I'll change it to that. And another important thing to note here is the call to the super dot on back pressed is at the end. Now you'll remember in all our lifecycle methods so far, the super method call is the first thing we do. But here it is the last thing we would do because that super call essentially finishes this activity and you know sends you back, uh, pops it off the stack. So it should happen after um, doing whatever we want to do here. By the way, um, we'll soon we'll see pretty soon. Um, you know, handling, passing off, passing the the number of coins back to the wallet activity this way uh, is not really needed. We'll store the number of coins outside of the activity instance uh, and the view model instance as well altogether. But for now, this is the way we are going to handle it. Okay. Now let's go back to our uh, wallet activity. Um, Will it work as it is? The answer is no. We'll have to make a small change where um, the result code could be okay or canceled. We want to handle both of them, right? Okay, let's see. So we start, um, yeah, that is the only change we want to make and We'll launch it here. Okay, the app is installed. Yeah, see, I mean, how the coins go to zero every time we launch it, uh, that's a bit annoying, right? So we'll see how to store that information on a persistent data, um, but you know, a little while later. All right, so. Um, let me gain some coins. We'll go to Shohan. Okay. And let's say I place a bit of five coins that the sum will be odd. Roll it and we lose it. Um, and now instead of clicking the return to wallet button, I'm going to click the back button. What happens now? The number of coins is sent back correctly. Um, and let's quickly see the lock cat messages. We see here, yeah, on back pressed and then on activity result in wallet activity. So it did go the way we expected it to go. All right. Okay. Um, we are going to see a couple more interesting things uh, here. So uh, let me bring you back to the UI, right? So what do you guys think? Do we need the return to the wallet button anymore? I think back button is the more natural way of going back from this point. So, um, you know, I am going to now remove that return to wallet button um, from activity show and this button is now going to be hidden. Um, it's a hacky way of doing it, but yeah, that's all I'm going to do right now. Um, I should also change it in, in the landscape layout. Right. Um, yeah, here it is. So with this change, we will no longer have that button um, and uh, the user will naturally, uh, we expect the user to naturally just press the back button to go back. All right. Um, okay, so that is about handling the, um, the back button. Um, we'll pause this video here. In the next one, we'll see an example of creating an implicit intent um, and launching the browser 
with that implicit intent.